All right, so to find the files for the Hello Per App that you're gonna need, there are going to be in the assignment in Canvas called the Hello Per App, which you might find in your to-do list, or you might need to go to modules to find. And then when you click on it, in this step right here, it says open this folder and download the two files to your computer. So if you open up this folder, it's gonna open up a Google Drive folder. Now you could download each one individually, but it's easiest to just download the folder itself to your computer. So up at the top where it says hello per files in shared with me, there's that little arrow to the right of hello per files. If you click on that, you have the option at the bottom to download, and it's going to download the file folder with the two files inside of it. And so if I look in my downloads right here, it's a zipped file. Now this might work differently on a Mac and a PC and a Chromebook, but what I need to do is double click on that and it opens or unzips it into an actual folder. And then here in this folder, I have the two different um, files, the picture of the cat as well as the sound of the cat meowing. The first thing that you need to do is go to appinventor.mit.edu. Once you're there, you're going to click on Create Apps, which is up near the top left of the screen in the menu. And it will open up a new window and prompt you to sign in. So you're going to sign in with your Google account, which is um, your school Google account. Once you've signed in, you will see this Welcome to App Inventor, and it's asking um, here a prompt to test out a beta version of something that they are working on. And I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to click Do Not Show This Again so I don't get this pop up next time I come in, and then I'm going to click on Continue. All right, so we are going to be starting a new project and we're gonna call it Purr, okay? The Purr app or Hello Purr. Now you're gonna need to be on the project page. So you might see this page when you first come in or you might need to click on projects up at the top menu to get to the project page. Now here it says to get started with some tutorials. We are not going to use the Hello Purr tutorial because this one already has everything loaded for you and I want you to be able to add your own files and so you are going to either click start a blank project or you're going to choose start new project up at the top left of your screen. All right now once you do that you're going to type in your project name and for your project name you can call it hello purr and what I would like for you to do is to add your initials. So that way when you submit these into Canvas and I go to download things to be able to look at and assess your projects, I wanna make sure that I have the right file for you when I'm grading it. So just add your initials and then say okay. The first thing that we need to do is upload the files that we have for this program. So the picture of our cat and the audio file of the cat meowing. So over on the right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see a tile that says media and then upload file. You'll click on that and you're gonna choose a file and it only lets us choose one at a time. So I've added the kitty.png. You'll need to look into the uh, hello per files that you downloaded. Um, so that could be in your downloads folder, or maybe you saved it to your desktop. So I clicked on kitty.png and then I'm going to choose open and say OK. And now here you'll see that I have the kitty.png file added into my media section. I'm going to upload file again and I'm going to choose this time to upload the audio file. Choose open, OK. And here it is. Now we have the files that we need added to kind of our desktop here that we have. So 
So now we're gonna start like building some of the different components of our app. And over on the left-hand side, you will see the palette. And in this palette, the first thing that we're gonna add are two pieces from the user interface. And this is how the, your, the user of your app is going to be able to interact with the app itself. And so we're gonna add two things from here. The first one is a button. And the second one is going to be a label. So you're going to drag those two things over. Now the next things that we're going to add is we're going to go down to media and in the media we want to add sound. And so we're going to click on the sound icon and we're going to bring it over into the screen of the phone here, the tablet, and you'll notice it didn't end up on the screen. It's a non-visible component because it's, it's audio. We're not going to actually see it. And so it shows up at the bottom here. The next thing that we're going to add is the accelerometer. So we're going to go to sensors. And this is when you are moving your phone. The accelerometer is going to be what senses that movement. So we're going to click on accelerometer, drop it on the screen. And again, it is a non-visible component. Alright, so now we need to assign different properties to the components of our app. And the first thing that we want to do is have some instructions for the users of what is it is that they need to do. And that's going to be the label. And I actually want the label to be first. So when I had dragged them over, I put that second. I'm just going to click on this down here and drag it up to the top. And on my label, over here, when I click on it in the components, you'll see that the properties opens up. And for the properties, I have a place for text, text for the label. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to say, like, pet the kitty or scratch the kitty's ears or something like that. So you can choose some sort of text instructions for your user. Now, I want to change the background color and you can choose any color you'd like. I might make it blue for this one. And you'll notice that when I made the background color blue, I can't see the black writing, the black text very well. So I'm going to change the text color from the default to something that's a little more contrasty, something I'll be able to see. So I could choose white. And then I'm going to make the font size a bit bigger, just so it's a little bit easier to read and you can choose different types of font style, bold, italic, you can even add some HTML formatting, like make it um, centered, things like that. But I am just going to kind of leave the rest of this, um, well, actually I might put, I'm going to put center here. Um, all right, so I'm good with the instructions, pet the kitty. Now, for the button, you might be wondering, because over here on the left for media, we can add an image. But we want this image to be, um, like if we actually pet or touch the screen, we want it to do something. So we're using a button instead. And with a button, you can actually add an image as part of the button. Down on the screen, in the properties, you'll notice that it says image and it says none right now. When I click on that, I will see the media files that I've uploaded. So I'm going to choose the kitty.png and then I'm going to say OK. And when we look at this cat, you will see that it has text right across his face and between his eyes. We don't want that to be there. And so over here on the right, we're still in button, you'll see that there's a spot for text and by default it says text for button one. We're just going to delete that. And so now we have the instructions and pet the kitty. The next thing that we need to do is add our sound. So we have a media file for sound and we added a non-visible component for the sound, but we need to connect that media file that we uploaded to the sound itself. So in components, if you choose sound one, over here on the right where it says source, right now there's none. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna choose meow.mp3 and then say okay. And then the last component that we have is the accelerometer sensor. 
And for this, we don't actually need to change anything. Um, the properties are by default exactly what we need them to be. All right, so we have designed the back end of our app. We've incorporated all of the different pieces that we're going to need. And so now we're ready to start programming. So you'll notice that right now, if you look at the top right of the screen, we're in designer. So we've put all the pieces together that we're going to need, but now we need to program it. So we're going to choose blocks. And you'll notice that over here in the blocks area, we have our four different components, the label, the button, the sound, and the accelerometer sensor. Now for the label, we're not actually gonna need to do anything with it. We've already edited the text of the label. It's just gonna be right there on the screen as instructions for the user of the app. Now the button was the picture of our cat. And we do want something to happen when we press that button, when we touch the cat, when we pet the cat. So we are going to choose when button one click. OK, so when we're clicking that button, we want something to happen. Remember, we want two things actually to happen. One, we want the cat to meow and two, we want it to purr. So I'm going to go back over here to button number one. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. So to get the cat to meow, I'm going to go to my sound. And over here it says, call sound one play. So what's going to happen is when button number one is clicked, sound one, which in the designer, we put the MP3 file of the cat meowing, it's going to play. Now we want the cat to also purr. Now, how we're going to take advantage of purring is if we go back over into sound here, we're going to choose this one here, call sound one and vibrate. So what it's going to do is it's going to cause the phone to vibrate, which is kind of sounds like a little bit like the cat is purring. So I'm going to drag that in as well. But it says milliseconds. So we need to choose how long we want the cat to purr. And if you go up here to the math section, the built-in section, we can choose this number icon. And we want to type in 500 milliseconds. Now, another thing that you can do, instead of going to math and then dragging it over, you can actually just kind of click somewhere in the workspace and start typing in. And it created this 500 that we could then drag in if we needed to. But since I've already put it in from the math section, I'm just going to put that extra little piece into the trash. OK, so we have one part of our app coded or programmed right now. When you touch the button, when you're petting the cat, it's going to meow and vibrate. Now we also wanted to take advantage of that accelerometer. So I'm going to choose the accelerometer. And when the accelerometer is shaking, so when you're shaking the um, phone, what is going to happen is we want the cat to meow. And so I'm going to pull over the sound, and I want the sound to play. So we have two sets of code here, two sets of blocks for um, the different things we want our app to do. When the button is clicked when we pet the cat it's going to meow and purr and if we shake the cat it's going to meow now that we have built our draft of the app we need to test it to see, does it really work or do we need to make any changes? One of the great things about MIT App Inventor is that it allows you to test your app anytime you need to on your device. And so you can use either um, your 
Android device or an Apple device in order to test this. But you need to have an app downloaded onto your particular device. So you're going to use the MIT App Inventor Companion or the AI Companion app on either your Android or your iOS device. And there are links here to either um, app in the App Store of the particular um, device that you have. Then there are instructions here. They do need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. So you need to make sure that your phone as well as your computer that is running the code um, that you created here on the same Wi-Fi network. If not, it will not work. And then you are going to connect it to the device using your QR code that you'll see on your screen and you'll be able to test your device out. On the left of my screen, you'll notice that I have my iPhone screen visible. The top left has the App Inventor app, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the app to open it up. And in order for this to work, my phone and my computer need to both be on the same Wi-Fi network. So it is asking me to type in the six character code or to scan the QR code. So what I need to do is to access the, that code or the QR code, I'm gonna click on connect. And when I click on connect, I have three choices. I want the AI companion. Now, if AI companion is kind of a lighter gray, I might need to refresh my screen, the companion screen first, but it looks great right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that the code is right here where I can use my, um, I'm gonna scan with my QR code on my app. I'm gonna click on that blue button and it's gonna go ahead and scan. And now, ooh, I just uh, moved my phone a little bit. So we heard the cat meowing. But you will see um, when, in, according to our code, when I click on the cat to pet the cat, it's gonna meow and my phone is gonna vibrate. You won't, you'll be able to hear the meow and you'll see when I touch the cat that there's kind of a, a white like outline of where I touch the screen and it also should vibrate. You won't be able to hear or see that, but um, I'll let you know if it works. So it did vibrate when I touched the screen and we heard the cat meow. So that part of the code is working great. The next thing that I wanna test is the accelerometer. So when I start shaking my phone, we should hear the cat meow. Okay, so I just shook my phone and it definitely worked. So we're good with that. But as I'm looking at my screen, there's some things that I am not a huge fan of. I'm gonna go back to, des um, to Designer on the right-hand side of my computer screen. Remember that I chose to, on my label, I wanted it to, the text to be centered. Well, it's centered in this blue box, but that blue box is teeny tiny, so you can't really tell that it's centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change the width right here it's from automatic and i'm going to do it to fill parent what that means it's going to fill whatever the um, device screen size is so a phone is going to have a um, different screen size than let's say a tablet so i'm going to fill parent and say okay and you can see that it fit the whole thing and i moved and so my cat is meowing but um now you'll see if i do like left right or center um, it looks like every time I change something, the cat meows. So um, next, I want to test out the button. All right, so if I want to change the, um, the cat, like the size of the cat, because if you look here, it's almost filling the screen, but not totally. And over here, there's all this extra space. You can play around with the button and centering it isn't going to work that was the text that we ended up um, deleting that would just center the text so to center the image we can't really center him using um, this tool but we can change the height and the width of the picture so let's say that i wanted to change the height to fill the parent it's going to fill it on each side 
but it, it, depending on your device, the cat's going to look really strange. So instead of fill parent, I'm going to change maybe the percent. And let's say I go to 70%. And what it did here is it changed it, the height, but this one, it just made the blue a little bigger. So what I would recommend doing is changing, finding out the amount of pixels and making sure that it's the right width and length for like one device and it stays the right aspect ratio. Now, ah, okay, on my phone, for some reason, it does this every time I play around with it. When I go back to normal, it doesn't make it here um, normal. It still is pretty tall, and I think that has to do with me connecting my phone to my computer. When I was testing it out earlier, not connected to my computer, that wasn't an issue. But the last thing I want to change is you'll notice that it says screen one up at the top. That's kind of funny to me. I'm going to change it to the name of the app. So if I click on screen one over in components and scroll down, I can see the text for screen one. And I'm going to type in hello per. Oh, I can't type with one hand very well when I'm holding my phone. Okay, so I changed the title to hello per. <coughs> every time I change something it purrs but um you can see that's now the um, title up at the top of the screen so once your app is complete and you feel that it has it looks good the text is good the right size font everything is centered or looks just how you want it then you are ready to turn it in to be assessed and I will show you how to do that in the next video